Hey everybody, welcome back to One Mic where I watch shit so you don't have to. And today I'm going to be covering a very short miniseries called A Very English Scandal. Uh, you can find it on Amazon Prime. It came out around 2018, I believe. Uh, stars Hugh Grant. And it was recommended to me by the homie Axel Foley, not of Beverly Hills Cop fame, but of uh, Daily DVR podcast fame. So um, you like shit like what I'm doing right now, but the audio version of it, uh, head on over to your favorite podcast app and find Daily DVR. Uh, they cover a lot of great shit as far as TV goes, and they've been covering it far longer than I have. I've been doing podcasting for probably about six, seven years, but um, they've been doing it longer. So um, big shout out to them. But uh, Axel, uh, the, I guess, creator of this uh, podcast network, um, he put me on this because he saw the praise that I rained upon Hugh Grant after watching The Undoing on HBO. And I gotta say, Hugh Grant has impressed me quite a bit. But I am noticing that a lot of uh, the impact that I'm getting from his dramatic acting performances rely upon the fact that that's not how I've seen him. So like if you take, let's take Jim Carrey, for instance, right? Jim Carrey, a guy we were accustomed to from Ace Ventura, Dumb and Dumber, Liar Liar, shit like that. And then he comes and does the Truman Show and it's like, whoa, holy shit, this man has acting chops. Um, and it's kind of the same vibe that I'm getting with Hugh Grant. It's kind of like, holy shit, this man has acting chops. But also, I think a lot of the impact that is creating the holy shit he has acting chops is the fact that um, the fact that he's so well known for being a lovable character specifically. Whereas, you know, like you look at Jim Carrey, it's like, okay, he does comedies and that's it. Um, whereas Hugh Grant, um, it wasn't just Hugh Grant does comedies. It was like Hugh Grant plays that lovable kind of, I, I don't want to say oafish kind of character, but like just like a, just like a I don't even want to say clumsy, but it's almost like clumsy in personality, I think would be the best way to put it. But he plays like a, he always plays this kind of character that you can't help but like. So when he takes these turns playing these characters who are doing bad things, it the fact that he does it so well, I think, is aided by the fact that it's such a stark contrast to what we're accustomed to seeing from him. And it, it's not to say that he doesn't I'm not taking away anything from his performances, but I think that's why they're even more impactful is that, you know, where he uses that lovability because he still interjects it into these roles. Like, you still see him being a person where it's like, you know he's a piece of shit, but you could, like, you can't help but resist like, you can't resist liking him because he's, like, just so, I don't know, like, quirky. Like, I don't, I don't know. It's, it's, it's rough to find a word to describe uh, what Hugh Grant does um, in a lot of his films to the point where I don't even know. Is like, is he like that in real life? Or is he, like, really, like, an asshole in real life? And he's just so good of an actor that he's become well known for playing these lovable and likable characters. But um, seeing somebody who in one minute can be somebody that it's hard to not like, and then shifting that same character to playing somebody who's doing something abhorrent is like, it, it's, I think it's really helping the impact of these characters. But um, yeah, Hugh Grant, uh, he plays a British politician. This is based on a real life story, by the way. He plays a British politician who enters into a homosexual relationship with a he wasn't underage, but a very young, uh, a very young man. And throughout the course of events, this young man decides that he wants to essentially out Hugh Grant for their relationship. And at that same time, Hugh Grant's uh, his character's name is Jeremy Thorpe. He's a politician. I can't even say character because he's a real life person. But he was Jeremy Thorpe was trying to move up in the ranks of British Parliament. And as he's moving up. Now, uh, the, the guy that he was having sex with is now very, is getting even more vocal about what's going on. And you see this dynamic of like, um, you see him interacting with the guy and you're like, oh, wow, they have a great relationship. Like it is, it, it, on the surface, it feels almost like an adorable Hugh Grant relationship from his romantic comedies. But then you see not only how... I don't want to. I don't want to call it depraved, but you can tell that Hugh Grant's approach uh, to sex with this young man is unconventional, and you could tell that the young man's not particularly into it. Like he, there's a lot of hesitance there, and um, you could see a little bit of the darkness there in, in how casually uh, Hugh Grant. Uh, I don't even want to say you can't say he offered sex. He didn't offer sex. He took sex. It, it was a very uh, I, but it wasn't not consensual. Like the guy wanted to do it, but it was like, 
the way Hugh Grant's character, the way Jeremy Thorpe uh, presented sex the first time with this guy, it was kind of very like, it was a foregone conclusion that sex was going to happen. And if the guy didn't want to do it, it probably would have happened anyway. So you, you see like a lot of, uh, you see a contrast even aside from uh, Jeremy Thorpe eventually deciding that he wants this guy dead. Like he, I, I need to, I need to continue my political career in its current cr trajectory. This guy's fucking that up. He's got to die. Um, so lots of cool uh, dynamics there when we're talking about uh, Hugh Grant being both loving and overbearing and, and, and commanding of this individual. And then also seeing him be one way in front of the cameras as a politician and then getting behind doors and talking very frankly about killing someone just for outing him as a homosexual. And um, this is at a time when uh, homosexuality is actually illegal. And throughout the course of the series, and it's, o it's only three episodes, by the way, throughout the course of the series, um, it covers enough time where eventually it's no longer illegal. So it's a, they can speak on it a little bit more freely. But I found it very interesting um, how just taboo, assuming that this is an accurate depiction of, of what was going on at that time, uh, in the UK, how casually politicians talked about killing people <laughs> or about heterosexual infidelity, like casually, like in restaurants, crowded restaurants, people like, yeah, that's my aide. Yeah. She's great in bed. Like, okay. You just talk about this casually, but how, uh, how secretive they were about their homosexual relationships. Uh, at the very opening scene is, uh, this is evident, like it's Hugh Grant's Jeremy Thorpe talking to another politician. And I think the other politician says that he's like, he puts a number on it, like 20% gay or something like that. But then he openly talks about um, having sex with one of his aides, one of his female aides. And uh, Hugh Grant's like, yeah, I think I'm about 80%. <laughs> like, um, but yeah, anyway, the show uh, is, is really interesting, particularly considering that it's based on real life events. So um, it's interesting to see a politician who is so likable in front, in front of the camera be so evil and heinous behind it. Um, and then I've mentioned the young man before, um, his name, uh, oh, what was his name? Uh, Nick, Nick, no, Nick doesn't sound right. Norman, Norman Scott was the name of the, the young man that Jeremy Thorpe was having sex with. And actually, let me not even minimize, minimize it by having sex. Like they seem to have a very good relationship. Like they were actually going to, like they seemed like they were going to be together at some point. And that's what threw Norman off was the idea of like, hey, I thought we we're going to be together. And now that your career is taken off, now you're treating me like the redheaded stepchild. No offense to redheaded people. But hey, you know, that's the phrase. Uh, my father was <laughs> redheaded. I have red hair that you can't see, obviously, as, is, as do, uh, I can't say all of my kids, but one of them very clearly does. Anyway, side note. Um, what was I saying? See, I, I get on my little tangents about red hair and I forget where I was at. But um, yeah, I was saying like he treats him like the redhead stepchild. And uh, he's played by Ben Wishaw, who I'm hoping I'm pronouncing his name right. But um, Ben was on the current season of Fargo, season four, playing Rabbi Mulligan, a completely different character than the character he plays in A Very English Scandal. And again, you know, actors having range shouldn't be surprising. But the level of range, like the difference between Ben's uh, Norman Scott character in this and his Rabbi Mulligan character in Fargo are complete polar opposites. And he plays both of them incredibly convincingly, like almost to the point where it's like, you know, I give him equal credit for acting performance in this show that I give Hugh Grant in this and The Undoing, because it's such it's such a huge contrast uh, and it's incredibly oppressive and, and, and incredibly profess, professive, impressive performance by Ben. So um, I, I, I recommend it for the acting performances and just to kind of like get like, I, I don't know about you guys, but I'm a big fan of learning about history and other countries history and being able to learn this story in an easily digestible and entertaining way of this, for the first British politician to come under fire for uh, trying to have someone killed. I mean, he goes to trial for this and everything. So um, I'm not going to spoil it at all, but um, a lot plays out over these three episodes. The only thing that I will say is that it's the acting performances don't elevate it to a level of like 
you absolutely have to see this. It's like, it's good, but it's not great. It's not something where I'm like, you have to watch this. It's not something that I'm saying, don't watch this. It's not even something that I'm lukewarm about. I enjoyed it uh, for what it was, which is a nice three episode miniseries, but um, a fourth episode would have been too much. Um, there's not a ton of story here. They don't drag this out, which is a good thing. Cause you look at something like Making a Murderer, which was on Netflix, which obviously was a documentary about a real life situation that um, as as much information as they needed to convey within that miniseries, I can't, no, I'm sorry, I'm not going to call, I can't call it a miniseries. It was like 10 fucking episodes, but like that was drawn out. That was way too long. Making a Murderer could have been about like six episodes and it would have been a very compelling six episodes. Whereas like the 10 episodes, it was kind of like, okay, this is going on a little too long. Uh, a Very English Scandal does a great job with its three episodes, telling us everything we need to know and moving at a, a, a I don't want to say a rapid pace, but at a consistent, acceptable pace. Like, you know, this, it, at no point do you feel like they're dragging their feet. At no point do you feel like they're uh, skating over important facts. So um, I, I give it like a solid kind of like B plus. Like it's one of those things where it's like, it's really solid watch. You can watch it in one sitting if you if you got three hours and you get to see some uh, phenomenal acting performances, and you get to hear an interesting story about um, the first British politician to try to kill somebody. So um, I, I recommend it. Uh, I don't think it's spectacular or anything like that, but um, it was a solid watch. And for three hours, it's, you know, it's well worth three hours of your time. It's well worth that. You could be watching far, far worse things over the course of three hours than this. So um, I think it's pretty cool. You want to see a different side of Hugh Grant? Check that out. I still recommend The Undoing over this if, you're, if we're talking Hugh Grant performances. But um, definitely check it out if you want to see some interesting Hugh Grant. If you watch Fargo season four and you are cut, and that was your introduction to Ben Wishaw, because that was mine. Um, you definitely want to watch this because it's totally different. And this is only two years ago, but it feels like it feels like this was like 10 years ago. How he plays a character so young and impressionable and naive um, and convincingly like he does this con very convincingly. Like it's it's almost like he's almost barely recognizable between this character and the character he played on Fargo. And we're only talking about two years tops, like two years between the airings. So like. We could be talking even less time between the airing. Well, well, the airing is going to be the same, but um, uh, really great. Check it out. Highly recommend. Um, well, I'll say really great, but really good. Check it out. Highly recommend. And I'll see you guys soon. Peace.